Hey Gen Zers, this is Mackenzie Amix with today's Gen Z with Mackenzie, and today I'm joined by Michael Campion, who stars on the Netflix hit series Fuller House in the role of Jackson Fuller. Welcome, Michael. Hi, how are you doing? So tell us about how you started acting. So I started acting when I was five years old. It was actually kind of a, an interesting <laughs> step into the world. At first I started with modeling because it was just kind of a fluke situation. My mom's best friend is a photographer and she got me um, hooked up with a, with a big modeling agency. Then I wanted stuff on my resume because they you know, wanted to put me up for more stuff. And I was only five at this time. So I started with theater and then it just grew from there. Lots of theater productions up until um, I believe like 10 or 11. And then when I turned 12, I got Fuller House. That's yeah. super cool. So you've been acting since a really young age. So is it true that you started your acting career as an Oompa Loompa? That's right. That was my very first role in Oompa Loompa. And <laughs> that was fun. That's so funny. On um on the Willy Wonka movie? Uh no, no, not on the Willy Wonka movie. I'm, it was just like a like a small theater production. Oh, Nothing that's so cool. That. Yeah, it's great. So you mentioned you were twelve when you landed the role of Jackson Fuller. So how did this kind of come to be? So it was a very interesting process. Um, usually when I audition, I'm not here in LA because I live in Florida. So I have to do a self tape. And essentially, you know, you, you stand in front of a camera, there's a person behind the camera who's reading off the other people's lines, and then you send that off to the casting directors. And so I had to do that for, for this one. They didn't give me a, like the title. They just said it was like an unnamed sitcom. I didn't know what it was. And so I just, I did it. And then I sent it off and then they wanted me again. And they wanted me again for a third callback. And by yeah. that time, I realized it was Fuller House because they like released the name. I was like, oh crap, like, like this is, this is like the sequel to Full House. Like this is yeah. insane. <laughs> and so um, I, I actually, I watched Full House for a while. So I was a big fan of that. And then it just kind of all happened at once. They were like, hey, we want you out here for your final audition. And then I flew out. Then in, in the room, they said, hey, you got the part. You start like in two days. I'm like, well, so it was, it was kind of a, a quick turnaround. And I was actually turning 13 the week that they uh, cast me in the role. So it was, it was kind of insane. It was a lot at once. Yeah, that's crazy. And you were just like 12 going on 13. So did you fly out there by yourself or with your family? No, no. I flew out there with my mom. Um, we didn't know I was going to be staying there for a long time. We just thought I was going there for the audition and then that was it. But when they told me in the room I got the role, it was kind of like, Wow. So I had my mom there with me for the first three weeks, and then we went back to Florida for a week, and then um, my mom stayed with me throughout the entire time. And my dad comes and visits, you know, occasionally. So yeah, it's fun. That's super cool. So when, since it's such like a popular show, how did you feel like growing up on a television, um, like a television show that was watched by millions? Yeah, yeah, I get that uh, question asked a lot. You know, it's really first of all, it's really cool. I will say that much. Um, you know, I I can see myself growing up and people have grown up with me now. And that's kind of, it's, it's nuts to think about because, you know, I remember watching full house and all the, and actually, well, when, when it was on prime time, I know, I mean, I wasn't alive during that time, but uh, it's really cool to have that legacy live on in this generation. And I know that I've grown up with kids on shows before. Like I, I remember watching, you know, the first season of stranger things and I was like, Oh, that's cool. Now I get to see them here. And it's uh it's really nice. It's really great. I love it. <laughs> That's super cool. Did you feel like a little bit of pressure when it was got a lot of coverage and stuff? I didn't feel pressure necessarily. I just, I love the entire thing. That's, I love the whole process and it was a bit of a learning curve at first to learn all the, you know, the ropes of interviews and events and things. Yeah. But after the first like year I got used to it. Now that's just been my life, you know? <laughs> So what was it like when you met like the original cast? It's really funny actually. So I <laughs> I hadn't met anyone on on the day. I hadn't read with anyone. I hadn't done any like chemistry reads. They just gave me the script and I went. And so the first day I was on set, the first person I met actually was Andrea, the one who plays Kimmy on the show. And I hadn't seen them like any pictures or anything of them growing up. And it was like you know, you know how some kids when they grow up, they don't really look like themselves. But I was like, oh my gosh, like she looks just like Kimmy Gibbler. Like that was insane. I remember telling that to my mom after she had left. And then um, soon after I had met the, the whole cast and we all had a big 
meet and greet. We all had lunch, I think, one day and um, got to meet my younger brother and my you know, sister Ramona on the show. So we just instantly became a family. It was great. That's so cool. Yeah. So how does it work, you know, living in Florida, like you mentioned, and working in Los Angeles? So do you have to travel a lot? Yeah, I definitely have to travel a lot. Um, it's gotten slower recently just because uh, I haven't been back in a while. So I've been up here. I, I stay up here for like, well, this season I've been up here for almost the entire year since February. Um, I've gone back a few times. Uh, yeah, lots of travel and just travel in general for for uh, events and things. So honestly, even if I lived here, I'd be traveling a lot, you know? Yeah. So yeah. how does, um, how do you do like schooling and how does that work with your like acting schedule? Are you homeschooled? So I am homeschooled. Uh, it is, oh my goodness, it's really, it, it, it can be difficult sometimes, I have to admit, especially this year. This year has been the worst of all of them because I'm, I'm in the 11th grade. Yeah, uh, so you have to get ready for like the SATs and stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that's fun. Um, but I, I do a homeschooling program and anytime I have off, of the set, I go up to the schoolroom where Sony and I, we do the same schooling program. And um, however much time I can fit into a day, uh, usually when I come home, I have to study again. So it's like having a full time job and then school and then a social life. It can get, it's very hard to keep a balance. Like I, I'll have a balance, a good week, and then something will happen. And then it's like, oh crap. So then one thing has to compromise. Usually school is like priority though. So yeah. You know, it's funny because I used to be homeschooled too. I mean, obviously I was never an actor, but um, my mom used to school us and then we also did an online program. But do you like being homeschooled? Do I like being homeschooled? Um, I want to say yes, just for the circumstances that I'm in. I feel like any other situation I wouldn't want to be because I, I feel like school definitely gives me that social side yeah. that I would be missing if I didn't have acting. So I feel like the acting portion makes up for all of that. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's easier on me. It's easier on my schedule. So, but for most kids, if they're just homeschooling regular, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, it was for me. I remember when I was homeschooled when I was younger, it was kind of lonely. But I mean, obviously for you, it's like the only option and it's like the only way to work around your schedule. So that's right. really cool. Right, right. It's the only option. And then sometimes when I'm not working, it kind of gets difficult because yeah. you, don't, you don't have that. But, you know, I'm almost 18, so I'm going to be out here. I'm going to be moving out here soon, hopefully. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are your goals for the future? Do you continue? Do you want to continue your acting career or do something else? I have, I have a couple of things I'm interested in, actually, besides acting. Um, well, I, I'd, say, I'd say the, the main six things in my life, I have um, uh, magic. I do, I do magic tricks. Oh, like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, wait, do, do you live here in LA? Just curious. Uh, no, I live um, on the East Coast. Live on the East Coast. Okay, so yeah. there, there, there's a place here called the Magic Castle, and it's like, um, it's like this old mansion built in like the 1940s, and magicians go there and perform, and I got accepted last year. So oh, I, that's I so cool. There. Yeah, it was really cool. So um, I have that going for me. Uh, I. I, I guess I'd, I'd say another area is physical fitness, like working out, going rock climbing. I do martial arts sometimes. Oh my uh, gosh, wait, me too. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, well, what do you yeah. do? Yeah, I do Taekwondo because my parents make me. <laughs> oh, then there you go. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Krav Maga, I'm not sure if you know what that is. But, uh, I don't know. It's, <laughs> no, I don't know. Anyways, um, I, I played the bass as well. So oh, that's I have so cool. Um. <sighs> And gosh, what, what else is there? I, I have so much going on. I wish, I wish I could like write it all down, but I have a lot of areas in my life. Um, magic and acting and playing the bass are probably the, here, let me grab my bass over here. Oh uh, yeah, show us something. Probably, oh man, I, I, I don't really have anything right now. Oh, okay. But yeah, 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 but this, yeah, so I, I play bass and um, magic and acting. Yeah, that's, that's it to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with all these things like in your life, um, how do you balance everything and, you know, make time for everything and yourself and your family and your friends? How do I balance everything? Man, that's a question I ask myself every day. Uh, I, well, I'm, I'm a very organized person. Like I need to like write things down. I need to have like a very consistent schedule and especially, you know, with the way that I'm, um, you know, 
living my life and all that, that, that has to happen or else I'm, I'm going to go crazy. So yeah. I have this little system set up for myself. Um, you know, I, like I said, I have the areas of my life that I, that I try and, you know, make time for every single day. I write out a, a little chart and at the beginning of the day I plan out, okay, I'm going to spend this much time on each of these things. And then I'm not going to let anything get in the way of that. So, you know, I have acting for a big portion of the day. Then I have time with my friends. I have time to play the bass. I have time to do this. So I have to like really uh, uh, set in stone before e the day even starts what I'm going to do to keep things balanced. Because if I just kind of let it go, I would be pulled in, in every, every direction. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's really like a really good system. Yeah. So tell us about um, the YouTube series Red Ruby that you're on. Yeah, that's right. So uh, earlier this year, I filmed Red Ruby. I play the main character, Theo, and it's about, it's about vampires and I'm a kid in it. And uh, I just kind of get messed up in the whole situation i don't i'm not a vampire nothing to do with it I just go to a normal school it's a lot of fun you guys should check it out yeah so it's kind of interesting how youtube is taking over like television what's your position on that i i personally i think it's i think it's all right i mean there's so many streaming services nowadays mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to to have a subscription to all of them um you know <sighs> I, I don't know. I, I have YouTube Red, so I, I get to watch all the exclusives and all that. Um, I think being on a show has changed my, my perspective a little bit because before I was like, eh, I don't really know. I don't, I don't really do any of that because I don't watch a ton of TV anyways. But I think this is a healthy change. I think that, you yeah. know, it was kind of, kind of obsolete now. And now this is the future. So Yeah, it's change. really cool. Yeah. So um, what advice would you give to aspiring actors and actresses? What advice would I give? Um, hmm, good question. I, okay, if I had to give like one piece of advice, I, I, I think that there's two routes that, that kids go normally when they're wanting to act. You know, one is just for fun, like doing it in high school, high school plays, and that's, and that's all good and well. If you like it, you do that. But then the second route is trying to get like on TV and commercials and all that. And let me tell you, it's, it's a lot harder than you're going to expect. I mean, yeah. I had to go through hundreds of auditions before I got even one. And a lot of kids, if they're not passionate about it, if they don't, if they don't love it, they're not going to stick with it because it's, it's, there's a lot of failure. There's a ton of failure in this industry. And you really got to make sure with yourself that this is what you want to do because you're going to spend years not getting anything until you get the one thing. And that's, it's just a waiting game, really. And in the meantime, I say... Work on your craft as much as you can. Um, go to lots of lots of improv, lots of acting classes, uh, lots of voice acting if that's around. Um, watch lots of movies. Film analysis is so important, and um, that's that's kind of what I do when I'm not uh, when I don't actually have uh, a show or a project that I'm working on. Yeah, definitely. So you said, um, as you mentioned before, it's the movie and show industry is super competitive, really difficult and a lot of failure, like you said. So what do you do to, you know, stay positive? Um, because failure is bound to happen and rejections are bound to happen. So what do you do to stay positive and to stay like persevering? Right. Well, I, I would consider myself religious. So I, I mean, what, one thing personally for me, I say, you know, everything happens for a reason. If I didn't get this one, you, you wait longer and then you go all the way down the road till you get the big one. And if you got this, then you might not have gotten that. Who knows? So yeah. I just kind of look at it like, who knows? No one does. You, as long as you are doing the absolute best that you can, as long as you make sure everything that you control is the, to the best of its ability, then you have to let everything else do the rest. And, uh, you know, a lot of people aren't patient enough for that uh so i got it, it is hard i will say it is hard to stay positive but you know being on this show i haven't had uh, a ton of opportunities to audition in these past five years just because you know the show is taking up so much time but when i get back into it i know that that's the mindset i'm gonna have to be in for sure that's great advice so with your super busy schedule and all these things that you've got going on in your life what do you do to cope with stress and stay mentally healthy so I, th I think I was talking about this earlier about, you know, like, like the important areas of my life. Um, I have a, a, a little meditation thing that I do every single day. It really helps. I mean, I start, I start the day with it. Um, it's, it's actually, so, so there's this guy, his name is Wim Hof. And apparently he like, he breaks 
like um, I don't know, like like cold endurance records, and he has this whole like meditation course that he put out, and I bought it like not too long ago. My only regret is not buying it sooner because let me tell you, it's it's like instant stress relief. I I do it when I'm feeling really stressed, and then everything kind of comes down, and it's like okay, this is manageable. That on top of me having a very organized um, uh, system about as long as I can see what I have to do on paper, I can organize. Uh, my my little time slots mm -hmm. for the day and get it all done. I mean, I I feel like willpower is number one when you're in this industry because you have a lot on your shoulders, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So, yeah. um, how can people follow you in your work, Michael? Follow me in my work. Um, you mean like social media and all yeah. that? Okay, so uh, I have Instagram. It's just straight up Michael Campion. Uh. Twitter is Michael Campion with two N's. And, um, oh, if you're feeling super lucky one day, you should totally uh, come visit my show that I have going on. It's going to be, it's, okay, so I, I, I don't think I actually mentioned this, but um, let me see. I it just came out the other day. It was announced that I'm going to be in what's called a Snow White Christmas. Um, and it's, by, it's, uh, it's at the Pasadena uh, Civic Center. And uh, Neil Patrick Harris is in it. I'm playing the prince in the show, and uh, you can get your tickets. It's going to be, like, what, like two weeks here in December and uh, two weeks in North Carolina. So, That's I don't know. That's awesome. Congratulations yeah, on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm going to be back for December, so I'll see if I can check that out. You should. You definitely should. It'll be on my social media, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Michael. Today I've been joined by Michael Campion, who stars on the hit Netflix series Fuller House. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.